So what Kristen and I did was to try and understand why the striped bass are distributed as they are using some of the basic information on temperature and diet that I've just described for you. And we tried to relate the striped bass choices with how humans might make decisions on a seasonal movement. So for example, humans often choose seasonal locations or vacation spots thinking about the weather. As I've just described to you, temperature of the water is very important for striped bass. As we've also talked about, food is very important, I think, for all of us making seasonal migrations. As you think about where you would like to go on your vacation, you might be thinking about food quantity. Probably striped bass are also influenced by food quantity, and the optimal vacationing spots in Massachusetts perhaps might be where there's lots of food. Perhaps when you and your family think about choosing a vacation spot, you might also have some decisions to make on food quality, fast food versus a four-star restaurant. We think that striped bass are also considering similar types of things. Do they want a low caloric food like a shrimp or a high caloric food like a fish? Although we think that temperature and food are incredibly important for the striped bass because they are on this feeding migration, there's another a, a number of other factors. For example, the desirability, the scenery might be something that we think about when we're making travel decisions, and there might be certain physical conditions of the estuary or of the coast, such as size, that might also be important for striped bass as they stay in a place or leave. Distance is something that we often think about when we're trying to decide where we want to go. Likewise, there might be some travel time distance considerations for the striped bass. When we humans decide where we want to travel, we often consider the number and type of people. Similarly, for striped bass, the density and the size distribution of fish might also be a consideration. Finally, there might be health and safety concerns. For a fish, we think that one example of this would be predation. So as we think about how striped bass are distributed along the coast as they migrate and why they might be distributed as well as the growth and survival consequences, we that is, Kristen and I are considering all of these considerations. It's also important to recognize that even within a specific estuary or coastal location, condi conditions will change through time and space. One of the things that's very important for a foraging striped bass is water movement, and this is reflected in the tidal stage. Often we think that striped bass get a higher foraging re reward or feeding reward when the current is high enough to concentrate the prey. In addition, we often see the light stage affecting striped bass foraging. In many cases, fish feed most heavily at what we call the crepuscular or dawn and dusk period. Although those of you who fish do know that striped bass will feed during the day and also at, the, at night. It's also important to recognize, and I think you all know this from visiting the estuary and coast, that temperature, crowds, and especially the food that is available does change across seasons. And so you have a very different array of food that the fish can eat in spring, summer, and fall. And those of you, of course, who swim in the estuary know that the temperature changes quite a bit from spring, summer, and fall. And these are things that do affect the striped bass as it visits us in the summer. So Kristen, for her master's degree, pumped the stomachs of about 4,000 striped bass. So you can imagine that these results were pretty complicated. What we have here is an example of the kinds of 
diets that the striped bass were eating, 85% of the fish that she examined had food in their stomachs. So these fish are feeding very heavily as we would expect from a group of fish that were migrating in order to feed. In spring, we saw a lot of invertebrate food, and you can see in the upper left-hand corner that there's a lot of shrimp that came out of the stomachs. In the summer, we saw a lot of invertebrates, the shrimp and green crabs, but we also see a few fish. Menhaden was quite common. This is also known as pogey or bunker. And in the fall, we have lots of fish here reflected by sand lance. One of the things that Kristen hypothesized, and we are now testing in other studies, is that there is a caloric or differential benefit between shrimp and fish. And it turns out that shrimp have a lot fewer calories than fish. So the analogy would be shrimp might be popcorn or vegetables, whereas fish might be a steak meal. I would like to just acknowledge Kristen, who is holding the fish diet in the fall picture. So to put this all together, we see that there are a lot of striped bass along the Massachusetts coast, but where they are and where they're feeding is quite different. One of the things that we are looking at now, and this is a collaboration between myself, Sarah Potsky, who is doing a master's degree, Jack Finn, Linda Deegan, and Bob Muth, is how are the fish that stay within an estuary for spring, summer, and fall distributed within the estuary? Are they randomly or regularly distributed, or do they clump together into hot spots or focal points? One of the things that we hypothesized at that there might be locations within the estuary where the conditions were extremely desirable, temperature and food might be especially good, and it's at those locations that the fish would concentrate. That is what we're looking at with the individual fish telemetry now. And of course, as we have discussed, because temperature and prey do differ across seasons, it's not surprising that the distribution of fish within and across estuaries is also variable. We are trying to understand exactly how this is related to temperature and diet conditions. So these are some of the things that we have been thinking about in our research. And myself, Kristen, Sarah, Jack, Linda, and Bob are continuing to investigate the distribution of striped bass in the Plum Island estuary. What we would like for you guys to do is next time you go to the estuary or coast or as you're talking about this in class, think about why are striped bass distributed as they are? What is the role of temperature in food? We'd also like to have you think about why do we care? Does this make any difference to you as a fisherman? Does it make any difference to you as someone who just wants to take good care of the estuary? We'd also like to have you think about why the variability occurs and what it means for science and scientists, for managers, and for general human use. One of the things that we would like for you to take away from our research is there's many questions out there and there's many potential explanations that you can come up with and there's many ways that you might be able to test some of these alternative explanations or hypotheses. So next time you go to the shore, you should be collecting observations that can help you understand why the fish are distributed as they are. You also can collect much information about striped bass through some common techniques such as beach staining, which you see here. But we're hoping that you will be so excited that you might want to learn more about striped bass and even become a scientist yourself. One of the other things that we hope you will think about is how your actions as a coastal resident might affect the health of the estuary and the coastal ecosystems because you can make a difference both positively and negatively.